Hi, my name's Sam and welcome to the YouTube channel. And as I said, this is about showing inspirational people doing inspirational things, people who are living life on their terms. And we've had some incredible contributors and this is another one. So hi, Kevin, welcome to the channel. How are you? Hi, Sam. No, thanks, man. Yeah, I know the sun is shining again after quite a few days of rain. So uh, bees are flying, so things are good. Good. So people are going to be interested to hear a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, so first of all, just explain um, who, who are you? Because we're going to talk about this project behind you. And it's obviously, yep. as you said, it's about bees. Um, and it's incredible. And it's an incredible invention you have. And it is Thank going you. to revolutionize everything for, for people and, uh, and us on the planet as well as the bees. So just give a little bit of background, Kevin. Who, who are you and what led you to this point? A, a bit of an intro. Hi, Sam. Right. So I'm Kevin Hancock and I'm the inventor of this, the Gardener's Beehive. Um, I run a building maintenance company out of um, um, that's basically predominantly based in Canary Wharf area. That's my day job, but my passion is um, trying to help honeybees. Mm -hmm. So about seven years ago, I decided there needed to be a better way of trying to help bees opposed to the conventional beekeeping methods that are out there at the moment, because they're over a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. There's um, even the latest hives, the thinking behind them is a hundred years old. And I knew there had to be a better way. So it took me about two years to develop what I've now come up with here, which is this gardener's beehive. And um, I've been running them for about five years now just to prove to myself that it is a viable and repeatable, uh, it can be replicated, but not only replicated by myself, but by anybody. Mm. So um, I've now come up with this gardener's beehive and it works. And um, now I'm trying to spread the word. Excellent. And, and you know, as you know, I'm very excited about this project. And the reason is because obviously we know that the bees are on a decline. And most people don't know that if bees die, which they are very much on the decline, if they die, you said something to me that Einstein said that, that we would die within five years, which is quite That's a right. shocking thing to know. And I think the, I just wonder if the average person really knows, and I know there's lots of animals that need saving, there's not as many animals that I know that have such a great impact on our lives. And the bees are so small, I think, we take them for granted how they pollinate the trees and we won't have any crops and there's so much that they do. And a lot of the conventional bee system is really about us taking their honey for us and not about a win-win for the bees, which is us having great honey when they've got enough and also increasing the, um, increasing the amount of bees. So um, from what we've spoken about already, I believe that your system actually helps increase the bees is that right that's right my system is predominantly designed for bees to help bees um, and like you say increase their numbers so conventional beekeeping one of the main aspects of beekeeping that they emphasize a lot is swarm control basically stopping the bees from making more bees mm -hmm. this is common practice this is one of the main things that you get taught in beekeeping mm -hmm. conventional beekeeping that is um, however, with my system, the volume of the hive is such that it is designed for the, the bees to actually make more bees mm -hmm. and go off and do what bees do. And mm -hmm. that's not specifically to make lots of honey, but to make more bees. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. And what you also said about Einstein, Einstein said that if, um, uh, after the last bee dies, humanity will die off within five years mm -hmm. and with a declining bee numbers and there's quite a few charities that are trying to help as well but nobody's actually make nobody's making a direct impact on trying to help bees make more bees well not until now at any rate yeah and i love and it's just like piles of questions in my head you know i'm so excited about what you're doing and i love that you're in suburbia and interestingly when i was looking for people who i found inspirational just show that you can have it all as in do something you love you know, have the lifestyle balance that you want. I could believe that you were actually just around the corner for me. And you're in a, as we can see, you're in a garden. You have two yep. children. You live with your wife. 
and yep. you are live core living with the bees um Absolutely. really well aren't you so you, you is that right that you have this in your back garden in suburbia yes this um this hive that we got over here this one here this is just a demonstration box but if you look over there there's actually a fully functional hive in the garden and you can see there's trampolines and slides and things in the garden. Um, okay, I don't have boisterous boys, but I do have boisterous girls. And um, they know not to go within a meter or two of it, but they'll walk over. And the bees, because they're not getting messed with all the time, um, they're not aggressive. Not to say that you won't get aggressive bees, but at the moment, these ones are completely placid. Um, so, and you've uh, had bees in your garden for how long? I don't know, 10 years now, seven, eight years in this garden. And so, how old are the children? Um, six and eight. And have so, they ever been stung? I've never been stung in the UK. <laughs> I've been stung in Africa, but I've been keeping bees here for a good 10 years now, and I've, I've never been stung. Um, so, uh, I'm not gonna, to say that, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is transferring. So I think I'm going to ask the question because I obviously, as you know, I kept some bees on a very small scale a couple of years ago. So okay. I'm going to talk from my point of view, the things that I know as a mum, I'd be really scared about because I really want to help people understand how simple this is. So yeah. as a woman keeping bees with her own business, the idea of putting a white suit on, going to collect the honey was actually, even though I love the bees, frightening. Um, and I was worried about my little boy you know being stung and whether it was safe to have bees in the house and um, sorry in my house is it right that you're saying that within the time that your children have had the bees within your garden that because this they, they're at peace they haven't actually stung your children is that right um none of us have been stung excepting my wife who was stung about two weeks ago we had the paddling pool out Mm -hmm. And there was a bee in the paddling pool that it obviously was busy drowning mm -hmm. and my wife stepped on it. Um, yeah. But that's the first time um, we've ever had anybody being, we've had quite a few people being stung by wasps when we've been having barbecues and things. Mm -hmm. But um, don't you say that you'll never get stung by bees. Mm -hmm. um, just because you've got a beehive in your garden doesn't mean that you're going to have um, more bees. The amount of bees in your garden are um, a factor of how many flowers you have in your garden. Mm -hmm. So you might not have any bee hive, but if you've got lots of flowering flowers, you're going to have lots of bees. Mm -hmm. And what's Where the difference, for, for, as an insect, what's the difference? Just to clear a lot of things up, I really want to do okay. that today. What's the difference between a wasp and a bee? Because <coughs> people really get it confused. And I know I speak to people and I say, it's a bee, it's not going to sting you unless you I'm going to actively wind it up. So what's the difference between a wasp and a bee in your experience? The wasps get aggressive. At the end of the season, when there's no more food for the wasps to live off, they then start starving to death because they will starve and die before winter. However, mm -hmm. the bees never go through that part of the cycle because they then stored up honey mm -hmm. and they will then um, live off the honey over winter. So bee, uh, bees get a bad rep, not because of bees stinging, but because they look very similar to wasps and mm -hmm. wasp stinging people. Mm. That's so good. And I just love clearing all this up with you because this is just so exciting. This invention, obviously I have um, looked at it and I actually found it in my local garden center and was super excited. And the difference that I know with what you have behind you, this invention that you've created, it's like the natural habitat of the bees and they feel very safe and calm in there. Also, as somebody who's tried keeping bees, the idea of collecting their honey, I didn't, I didn't want to put my hand in. How, what I'm really interested in is, could you explain how you get honey in this absolutely. house? Yep, absolutely. Yes, this, um, like you're asking, this replicates a, um, a tree stump. Um, and the, so to us, it looks like a box. However, to a bee, it looks like and smells like a um, tree stump, which is mm -hmm. their natural habitat. So mm -hmm. I'm basically replicating a tree stump. So to, make, to get it to smell correct, not only is there a mycelium-based uh, wood chip in the bottom, 
but then I also make a, a lure to attract the bees. So you don't need the bee suit. If you're going to just put the hive in the garden and bait the hive, the bees will then just move into the hive. You don't need all the gubbins. You don't have to go on weeks of training. It is like a bird box. You just put the thing in the garden, you bait it, and then bees will move in. Once the bees are in, then it's a question, do you want to keep the bees just for pollinators or do you want to keep the bees and get a little honey out? If the answer is you want to get a little honey out, then this is quite easily done. We're taking advantage of another quirk of wild bees. And wild bees in, in the wild, what they'll do is they will actually squirrel away in all the little nooks and crannies in a tree stump mm -hmm. um, honey. So taking advantage of this, we now have a box like that. That box will then fit onto the side of the hive. And that's it. Job done. So cool. And it's just so incredible that I don't have to don a white suit. I don't have to manage this. I just leave it like a bird box. I leave it. Yep, I stick this little box on. And then I come the order and pull the box off, put the cork back in. The flies, the, the bees fly off and I've got honey and I can take it to my house and eat it. Yep. That, that's it. <laughs> so cool. There's no so, reason to overcomplicate something as simple as, as how they have complicated um, beekeeping. And it's uh, amazing, Kevin, that I, this is literally a world leading invention. There is nobody doing what you're doing. And the thing that really used to scare me about the bees was my intuition was the normal beekeeping, what they do is they don't want the bees to fly away. Um, they want to they want to keep everything within the hive. Now we know that the queen gets old, so in order to do that, you have to first of all clip her wings to keep her inside. That's and secondly, right. You when she's old, real and this is honest, a beekeeper will pull out the bee, squash her and kill her. That's that. That's, that's thanks very much for all your hard work and the killer and the put a new one in. That's you right. You don't have to do that here, and you still can get the honey, can't you? Absolutely. And the last thing that I really want to cover is honey because a lot of people don't really know, Kevin, what is actually happening within keep beekeeping. So what we've talked about, just to recap, is that normally, even me, if I was a beekeeper, I would need to manage the bees. I go in and I clip things, I clip the wings, I pull things out, I'm messing with them to get the honey. With this, you don't touch it. We're helping the environment, we're increasing the bees, and then I just pull a box off and I've got my honey. So Absolutely. What I want to really get to the point of is honey itself, because most people do not know that m the honey that you get from a supermarket has probably got antibiotics in it, and it's probably been mixed with sugar. And even within the hive, the bees are given sugar. Um, yes. Can you just tell me what is the system, as I just described, from normal beekeeping and what we're getting as a product and this and what we're getting as a product, what's the difference? It's light years apart. You can't compare really. Um, conventional beekeeping as a norm, they feed sugar water or some sort of sugar-based um, food for the bees. Uh, this is to push up production when it's rainy or if it's a bad summer, they, um, it allows them to take um, all the honey out of the hive and then feed them sugar water over the winter. Um, however, bees are not designed to eat sugar water, they're designed to eat um, honey. And then the other thing is, like you're saying in supermarkets, what you're getting in a supermarket, if it says EU and other, normally the other is sugar water mixed with enzyme um, to create a synthetic honey. So if you're buying EU and other, that other is normally about 90-95% um, synthesized honey, it's not actual. Did you say 90 95% in the honey of stores? Like when yes. you get it at the store, 95% is, is synthetic honey. That's correct. That's why they can make it so cheap. There's no ways that you can go in and buy for two pounds a jar of honey that's mm -hmm. real honey. Um, so, what does synthesized even mean, Kevin? They, what they do is they take sugar water and they artificially synthesize the enzyme that then turns the sugar water into a honey. So a bee will create the enzyme and it'll take the flower nectar, which is a, basically a sugar water, mm -hmm. and adds the enzyme to it and then it'll make honey. Um, this is then done in a factory. Obviously you don't get any of the benefits of all the um, smells and aromas and um, 
all the products that you would get from a from a wild flower um, mm. in a synthesized honey compared mm -hmm. to a a natural honey. So with That's this system, a you, That's a big shock. So it, it's you know most people don't realize that ninety five percent of what they're eating and they think is honey, it's not even they're not getting the benefits of the honey. Not even honey. Honey's got all sorts of beneficial natural honey has got all sorts of beneficial um, attributes to it. Um, mm -hmm. So just and you also have lots of products coming out of a beehive. You've got propolis, um, you've got um, honey, you've got the wax. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're buying a supermarket um, products, um, that if you do have a bit of honey, a real honey, it's really extensively watered down. Um, and you are then losing all those beneficial um, attributes that natural honey has got. So conventionally, these bees are never fed sugar water ever. They it's up to themselves to then um, make their own um, honey and um, all the other products that they then need to be able to survive successfully, which then makes them stronger. And because they're stronger, you're then ending up with a the honey with all the health benefits that you'd expect to get from honey. So it's a no-brainer, really. And we're saying this is not about the production of honey. This is about, you know, if you want to do something for charity, this could be your thing. And also you get the benefits of, you get the honey as well. And Absolutely. you have something within your family that's natural and it's going to add benefit to your family's health and nutrition. Um, and we are helping the bees. And I was you know, going to spend money on you know send into a charity whereas now i just want to buy one of these they're awesome <laughs> thank you very much well thank you so so much for joining us kevin you are definitely an inspirational person what you have created and what you've done for the world i am so looking forward to seeing this company expand and the way that you've balanced with your home life and i know that you pick your children up because we've talked about this and that you've got your company and you live in suburbia and you live in life the way that you want to, doing what you're passionate about. Um, I am so privileged to have met you and to be able to do this interview. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Kevin. And we'll no put a link to your YouTube channel as well. Just just to also say that you have a YouTube channel with lots of information about bees and beekeeping which is really fascinating. So I'll make sure, um, can you just tell me what your YouTube channel is? You just put in Gardener's Beehive and you will come out at my channel. Brilliant, excellent, Gardener's Beehive. Thank you yep. so much, Kevin. Look forward no. to seeing how it goes. Thank you, bye. No you take it easy, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. bye.